What is going on? Charles Bootenston here. Today we are going to be talking about the nice guy. The guy that is just, yeah, everyone loves him. Everyone loves him. Or at least he thinks that everyone loves him. And he just, he morphs to the person that he's actually talking to. And I'm not talking about sales where someone's talking really fast and then you start talking really fast. Or someone's talking really slow so then you start talking slow. I mean, if you say something that you disagree with or you say something that, you know, maybe is counterintuitive to your beliefs or your value system or your ethics or your morals or your values and you say, oh yeah, no, that's fine, that's fine. That is the nice guy. That is the nice guy syndrome. So first of all, we'll just give a little shout out to the book, incredible book out there called No More Mr. Nice Guy. It's probably about 275 pages of pure gold. So they pretty much boil it down to about two areas. Number one is someone that's religious and they say Christian, like I grew up Christian, I was a nice guy. I was a really nice guy. And then they talk about in the book probably about 12 examples and about half of them are Catholic, Protestant, Cat, you know, Christian, doesn't really matter, Jewish, doesn't really matter, but you grow up as a really nice person. Just just someone that's just real nice. And the reason being is that you you fear the, the morals and the ethics and the sins that you may do, so you just say, I don't want to upset anyone. I don't want to do anything that steps on anyone's toes. I don't want to break any glass or shatter anything. And then you just you just go through life just people pleasing. You just do everything you can to just, yeah, yeah, no, no, that's not a big deal. And then there's no confrontations, there's no actual arguments, there's no negotiation. Probably the worst in sales, you know, that, that's really what it comes down to is that because selling actually, there is tension, there is friction. And getting what you want, there is gonna be tension, there is gonna be friction. When you're when you're trying to influence someone, you're trying to actually put your your idea as a good idea whether you're managing someone, whether you're ordering food, whether you're starting a business, whether you're actually selling your service or your product or yourself on a job interview or a date, it doesn't really matter, is that there, it, there will be ultimately tension because you're, you're putting yourself as an option for them to buy. There's gonna be silence. There's gonna be something that happens in the interaction where you just say, okay, are we gonna move forward? Are we going to go on a second date? Are we gonna actually buy the service? Are we gonna buy the product? Or am I gonna start with this job? It doesn't really matter is that the book, first of all, is incredible because it, it kind of outlays why we are, why it's bad, and then what to do about it. Okay, so we're just gonna go over a couple of areas. So obviously, kind of talked about why we do it. It's, it's how we're raised, okay? So we're raised by a single parent, we're raised by someone that is maybe just really nice and they just people please, then you just get those habits. You could be religious, it could be something like that. And then why it's bad is that you never, you are not actually happy because you're not actually expressing your beliefs, your values, your, the, the area that you want to change or what you want. And ironically enough is that those are the most unhappy people. They go through life and they people please and everyone wants to like them. They, they just morph to the ideas of others, but they don't actually express and they don't actually go after their desires, their goals, their wants, their, their needs, and then how to actually change. This is not overnight because this is deep, seated beliefs. Even today, there's, there's a couple of times that I just say, why did I even agree with that? Not saying that I intentionally go through the world and just try and just knock, knock myself around, but there's times where I just say, ah, I don't think that's a good idea, or ah, I don't actually wanna take that list in because I'm in real estate, or ah, I don't think that negotiating pattern or that way of selling or that, or that price is good. So it starts on minor little things, typically over the phone, typically through text message, then it escalates to actually in person where you can actually in person say, you know what, no. That's, that's not the best price to put your home on the market. That's not the best way to do things if you're looking to sell it to, say, an audience or yourself or to other people or to your spouse, to your boss. It doesn't really matter. Is that there will be a time where you, you will have to push the uncomfortable envelope of getting what you want and that is the basis of sales. If you are selling an idea, you have to find out the need, the want, and everything in the hurt and the pain of the other person. So the pain could be 
I'm overweight. And say you're selling gym memberships. You have to find out, okay, is are you overweight because you don't like the gym? Are you overweight because you overeat? Are you overweight because you don't wake up early? You don't have time for it? You know, there's too much going on in your life. You have an injury and you have to find out where in that pain point of selling your gym membership to, to, to that person, where you have to just plug in your idea. And the thing is, there will be tension. There will be friction. And that's why I've talked about it multiple times is that our, our phone is the number one one way to escape uncomfortability. And if you lean into being uncomfortable on a daily basis, something that as minor as getting into an elevator and not looking at your phone, as minor as waiting online without looking at your phone, as minor as when everyone else wants to do something, you say no. Or someone says, hey, listen, let's all go out tonight and you don't want to because you have to wake up early or you have a big sales pitch or you want to go to the gym in the morning. That happens all the time. I have friends that text me and they're like, hey, listen, let's go to this other place. It's probably 11 p.m. or 12 a.m. on a Friday or Saturday. And I know that I have to wake up to either cycle or I have to go up, wake up because I have open houses. And I just say no, okay? It took me years, years to get to this point. It took me two readings of the book. That's how bad it was for me. I'm gonna say probably one of the one of the best quotes that I've heard from this is that number one is it comes from insecurity. Insecurity that you're not enough. It comes from insecurity that your idea is not enough. You you as a person are not enough unless you're accepted by the person or the party that you're actually trying to influence or say it's a, a spouse and they say, I don't like this about you. Okay, great, you can change, you can talk about it. Talking about it is the best way, but if you immediately change without actually revisiting that, which is say your spouse says, don't go out on Fridays. I don't like when you're going out with the boys. I don't like when you're going out with the girls. And you actually just say, oh, okay, cool. You're people pleasing, but maybe that was your, your time to actually socialize. Maybe that was your escapism. Okay, going on from here, trying to do, this is probably one of the best things. Trying to do so, in other words, people pleasing, will only make you feel uncomfortable and emotionally drained. All the time, all you're doing is finding out, is this good, is this the music I like? Is this, is this the idea that I should go with? And the whole time, you're just emotionally draining yourself because you're just checking in. Is this, is this something that I like? Is this something that I don't like? And then you either move forward into the idea or you talk about it, which is actually girlfriend or boyfriend. That's my escapism. That's why I go out on Fridays. That's why I have poker night. That's why I play hockey because it, it releases that tension or that releases, that's, that's the freedom. That's the only time I have freedom in my, in my life. And when you actually think about it deeper is that I, I think this is gonna be the core reason. Well, first of all, it is the core reason to politically correct is that you don't want to offend anyone, okay? Going through life, you will f offend people. Humor offends people. Um, asking and, and being who you are offends people because no one, 100% of the time, is gonna accept you exactly for who you are. Your ideas, your morals, your ethics, everything like that because someone else is gonna say, I think this is a better way to do it or this is, you know, you know, taxes on the rich, taxes on the poor, taxes on the middle class, it doesn't really matter. When it comes to politics, when it comes to your product or your service, you're always gonna have tension. So it starts with minor things, and here's the takeaway, here's the practical advice, is that every single day, look for areas that you can change the way that you approach conversations, whether that's through text, email, just say what you want. First of all, nobody really cares. Second of all, no one is actually gonna say, well, that's actually the shittiest idea. And to be honest, that's not the person you wanna work with. If it's a client, that's not the person you wanna date. If, it, if you're on a date, just be like, okay, cool. You know, to get to that point, it takes daily, daily, daily discipline to say, how am I feeling? Look inside and say, am I actually doing this because I wanna people please? I'm not saying go out there and smash some windows and do crazy things with relationships. Maybe it comes down to that, maybe it doesn't, but it really comes down to you being authentically you. Because when you're authentically you, you know, here's an example, you know, controversial as it is, is, is Kanye West, whether whatever his motives are or whatnot, just literally put himself out there, which is insane in Hollywood and everything like that. And he just said, this is who I authentically am. Whether you agree with it or not, I, I wish I had that courage to come out there and just say, you know, in business, I want the listing. Or in, in relationships, yes, I want your number. I wanna go on a date with you. Getting to that point is exactly, A, number one is, uh, number one is, you're saving time. I want your listing. I wanna go on a date with you. Instead of, how are you doing? Are you okay? Uh, yeah, can we, do you wanna go out for coffee one time? Nobody wants that. 
Nobody wants that as a leader. Nobody wants that to do business with you. Nobody wants to date that. I, in New York City, see it all the time. You have strong personalities and you have extremely weak personalities. As you age, your personality actually, it goes one of two ways. It goes and it starts to get a little weaker because you're getting beaten down and there's a lot of losses in life. And then it goes the other way, which is you just start saying, fuck it. You know what, I'm aging, I, I'm i just gonna go after what I want. I, I highly recommend No More Mrs. Mr. Nice Guy. It's obviously not a book review. I'm not gonna do a book review on it. That That's kind of just the, the beginning part of having you be your authentic self and it really comes from what am I actually doing to people please? What am I actually doing to make people like me or to m like my ideas or my, you know, my service, myself, you know, whether, and, and I'm not saying, like I said before, you don't go out intentionally looking for it, but you just also have your moral, you lead with that. You lead with your morals, your ethics, your authenticity, who you actually are, the music you like, the what you like to do on weekends, what you don't like to do on weekends. When you see someone being vulnerable and they're putting themselves out there that's a little bit different. I have a client that she's into like fantasy, kind of like Comic-Con things. And she's like 45 years old, but she dresses up as like a mermaid and all these other things. And it's like, whether you agree with it or not, or whether you like it or not, her being her authentic self is just really putting herself out there. And that is what it comes down to. Hopefully this uh, resonates with you guys. If you have any questions, leave in the comments below. And of course, as always, uh, subscribe to the video and the comments really drive the conversation and it drives the content. So leave your comment, what you wanna talk about, whether it's financial, whether it's health, whether it's something else. 